Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Marta Fernandez de Alarcón, and I am the Secretary General of the Spanish Business Council. Uh, and I want to welcome you to this webinar about building high performance teams, uh, strategies for well being, leadership, and productivity. With one of our members of the Chamber, of the chamber a new one, um, AGC Coaching and Consulting. Thank you so much for your collaboration and, and your support as a valuable member of the chamber. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to present for this webinar our, our expert from AGC Co Coaching and Consulting today, uh, Albert Cervello. He will decode an insightful session pack with uh, strategies and actionable tips to boost well-being, leadership, and productivity within your, organiza your organization and your teams. And he will also discuss about some topics as, for example, talent development, mindfulness, emotional management, mm -hmm. and the popular topic of the time management. Uh, the Spanish Business Council is an international community, and our one of our main goals is to be um, uh, to be um, a platform um, where uh, all our members, with their support, uh, uh, can share ideas, interact with other members, and find collaborations between them. Uh, so I don't want to rest time to our speaker. Uh, we can start, and at the end of the of the webinar, we will explore a question and answer uh, time. Okay. So thank you, Albert, and uh, let's start. Thank you, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be here. I'm I'm honored to 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 be able to do this this session, and thanks for the people that has joined or the people that will watch this in in, in YouTube. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's start. Let's make this 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 time valuable. No, time is precious. So first, uh, I'd like to, to to welcome you and invite you to put in the chat. Uh, we can see a list uh, where you where are you based, your role, what are you expecting, what would you like to get a little bit from this um, from this webinar. Oh, just name, uh, role, so so I can have an an idea of of uh, where are you located. Yeah, you can put this in the chat so we can a little bit know a little bit more about about each other. Maybe they are a little bit shy. I'm not sure if you know the. If maybe they are not going to to answer, but we can we can. No. Then let's jump into the, the 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 presentation that I have for for today. So. Uh, yeah, that's my, my my commitment for 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 this time for this time together. No, I like the this idea to be here, like around around the fire, uh, this space for for um, for sharing. No, this a little bit for for supporting. No, because sometimes managers can feel alone, or, or leaders, or entrepreneurs. So so let's have this atmosphere of sharing sharing a space. Uh, I appreciate your time, so I really want to give to, to give value, uh, and that's the purpose of, of this time. No, I say it. I have I have slides, but I always try to give the best to my to my audience. So so the invitation is to be present, to participate, to ask questions because at the one we want to deliver value specifically to you. So so the more you give, no, let's say the more you will receive. So this is obviously a secure space, not judgmental. And uh, yeah, the ideas are for you uh, to try to experiment. No, it's uh, Einstein was talking about insanity to trying to get different results from doing the same things. So the invitation here is, you know, it's not what you learn, it's what you put into practice. So so this is actually the same in, in teams no? or, or same for, for management. So the invitation to explore different ideas to be open-minded no? and, and, and then just, just try and there's no error, no? everything is feedback. So, so basically we're going to have like around 45 minute session uh, when I'm going to share insights, best practice, state of the art, you know, what's the current state uh, about this, this topic. And then we're going to have some time for, for, for Q&A yeah, to answer any specific question, but if you have any specific question at a certain point, just, just feel free to. Albert. Yes. I Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you because I think that the the, the chat was uh, disabled, so it, it wasn't open. So now I, I have some uh, answers. Uh, we have 
Marta Barragán, between our attendees, is a marketing coordinator at Cosentino. We have also Marta Guarneri, HR consultant and coach based in Abu Dhabi. Happy to be participating on uh, to the webinar. And I'm not sure if uh, more people will will uh, write. I'm not sure if it's done now, if it works, but uh, I will I will tell you uh, after the people um, write, okay? Thank okay, you. Okay, that, that, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, that's just, uh, if we have more HR people, more, more leader people, what the kind of profile it helps me to, to, to see it a little bit. So that's, that's very interesting. Thanks for, for those uh, sharing. Uh, so that's the, a little bit the idea, right? To have this session to give value for your time. And then at the end of the session, I, I'll offer you three, three gifts. Uh, so for the specific people joining this, this webinar or watching the reply uh, for you. So you can really, what they want you to help to take action. No? Sometimes I said, we, we have no clarity. Uh, we don't know this strategy, um, but, but yeah. So I, I'll try to help you to take action and integrate these, these results. So let's moving on. No, uh, let, let's see now that the chat is enabled because for me it's important. This a little bit in interaction no? to, to make it to make it valid to understand where you are, what what you really need, no? what the specific need we always need from 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 the clients to to understand their pains, to understand their struggling, to understand. No, and then from this we can we can help them. We can help them to arrive to what they want to get, what they want to achieve. And we can help them in this in this journey together. So, so if you can think about this, no, if I ask you this question, could you share no, in the chat your superpowers, your strength? What what would you you answer? I tend to have this this question in my in my trainings, uh, and, and yeah, I'm just just curious to to, to see what's the the the, the, the feeling, no, what's the kind of answers? No, normally people. Um, has not an easy answer for 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 this. No, it would. Are you clear on your strength? Uh, you have clarity in in these superpowers. What do we understand as superpower? I mean, do do we know the difference that we make the difference? Do we know who we best uh, give value to our teams? So that's a, a key question, I think, for for everyone. No, for for leaders, for managers. Because first, for you, it's important to understand what are your strengths. And then when you know yours, you can also ask or, or check the, the, the strength of your team. Because if you don't know your strength, uh, then I have the, 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 the question, no? Do you know your weaknesses? Um, Albert, so yes. Marta Guarneri uh, wrote uh, that listening skills, empathy, passion for my profession and service to others. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's, that's very, that's very important. I mean, sometimes we underestimate our, our strength, no, the empathy, the listening, and that's, that's very powerful as a, as a, as, as a leader. So, so yeah, because for me, there's, there's only well, two focus, either your focus on your strength or you are focused on your weakness. No, if I ask you, Normally, this is what happened in my in my training. No, what I said when I ask about the strength, people really struggle. People say, "No, I don't have I don't have any strength." And but if, when I ask, "What about your weakness?" Then people really start no could start like writing, writing, and writing, oh, and and that's and that's an interesting story. And then so I will share also about my my story a little bit a bit later about that because that that's that's uh, for me was crucial. To really understand the difference, what is really a strength? Because normally we come to understand that strength, for example, could be something that we do great, but it's not. It's more than that. It's not only this. It's not that we do great things. I mean, we can do great things, but we cannot really enjoy them, or, or it doesn't, or it drains us. No, a strength is actually activity that makes you feel strong and energize you. No, it's it's something that really you feel well after doing it. Uh, there's there's more just the activity. No, there might be more things. There must be engagement. There must be mission. There must be mission. There must there could be meaning. So this normally increase our performance because we we feel well uh, and it can be recognized in promotions. Sometimes it's difficult to under to know under our strength because it's so natural. It's so natural for us. 
No? It's something that you maybe were born. But but here is the key, you know, to really to really understand to understand it how we can make the difference. And and it's interesting because in I think in our education, uh, in most of the countries we are so focused in weakness, you no, know, in developing our weakness. And and that's the model of education that we used to have, at least I had, you no, know, and it's quite common that people should know everything. You no, know, we have a flat profile where you you should be good at everything. But now in companies. I think it's important to have like peak performance. So people where it's very good you know, in, in something specifically. So you don't have to know everything, just really uh, enhance or embrace your strength, how you make the difference and how you, that really make you feel strong, energize you, so you feel well after doing it. So that's the difference, no weakness. Actually, you can do these, these activities uh, and you can do it well, let's say, but at the end, you may feel weak and drain you. And, and at the end, no, that's the, the thing. It's not like one day, one week, one month, one year, but it could be a long term, long term run. No, it can uh, really uh, impact performance and affect obviously your motivation uh, at the long term. So, so for me, that was an interesting question uh, to reflect. And, and then that's when I really realized about what I was doing, it, it was not really uh, energizing and it was not really connected to my, to my strength. So if you like to share um, like some kind of, of, of strength now that it's more clear the definition um, in the chat just, just for you or, or, or at least to, to, to reflect no? because I think that's that's quite quite important uh, to write down to write down this, this, this situation. Okay, great. So when we are clear about our strength, the second question is, do you have the chance to use to use it every day at work? How often do you use them? Because I think that that's also another, another point. First is, is, do I know my strength? And the second and most important, I am aligned with my strength in my daily life. Do I have the chance to use it every day at work? If, if I ask you, what do you think is the average of people using their strength at work every day, according to the, to the statistics? What do you do you guess? How many people really use their strength every day at work? So, so 60% Marta is saying 60% it's an interesting question, yeah, obviously, and that's that's the the the, the, the thing, and, and I think it's it's I appreciate that you being here because sometimes we are so busy uh, in our everyday uh, activities that that we don't take this time to reflect, you know, to to reflect, and one hour in a strategy uh, can reduce a lot of hour in the daily activities. So so so, and that's like uh, let's say they i'm not sure what your experience no you maybe you can share some of these but the experience with nowadays in many companies is that they are so busy in in, in activities some busy in projects that they don't have time uh to to stop for fuel no and uh, and that's a challenge no at the end no that's like the seven the seven habits of 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 efficient people not sure you know about that but sharpen the 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 saw no, it's actually one of the of the most important no, to take time for for ourselves, because so Marta was saying sixty percent. So actually, just twenty percent. Only two out of ten people strongly agree, according to to research, that use their strength every day at work. And for me, these these, these statistics. Every time I, I I mean, if you're interested in the reports and the statistics, I can share with you. I mean, you will have my contact, and I can provide you. I really like uh, statistics, um, and, and that's yeah, and that's surprising. No, only two out of ten. So there's a lot of hidden talent in organizations. I think that's one of the of the the crucial messages that you could get from today's session. There's a lot of hidden talent in organization, and there might be a lot of hidden talent in ourselves. The, the the good news uh, I, I like to give good news is that this can be uncovered, obviously, no, and and, and that's what I am here also to help you on, on this. And I, I want to explain a little bit about my, my journey, because my journey also is related to, 
to strength is related to to this being aware, no? being more conscious of, of, of your abilities. So I, I studied telecom engineering in Barcelona. I'm, I'm based close to Barcelona at the moment. But I really love cultures. I love traveling. I did an in, in student exchange in Germany. And, and then I actually managed to work internationally uh, where I work in 10 different countries. Uh, I really love culture, work, working in different cultural environments. And I really like this, this, this part, no? And when, when you are young, you just want to give value. So it was, it was a good journey for me, these 15 years and, and internationally working as a, as a consultant. I was working mobile deployments. I helped uh, 2G deployments, 3G, 4G. The only thing that the end with the technical, you know, every two years, it was changing technology. It was a little bit too much. But at some point, you know, I was feeling that I was doing good my job. I mean, I, I had good performance reviews. But at the end, something was missing for me. So I was I was actually getting a little bit drained. Apart that, I was also having uh, some challenges, no, with 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 relationships, some challenges with really purpose in my life. So I had the kind of middle life crisis around when I was thirty years old. So I started actually to really question uh, all about uh, my, my my life. No, I was following what it was supposed to be. The, the the path, you know, the expected path according to society to be to be happy. So I, I studied engineering degree. I work in a multinational. I work for Cisco for Cisco Systems, one of the giants in telecoms, for almost ten years. And, and I had the opportunity to travel. And, and I earned quite, quite good money. I had a company car, I had good salary. So externally everything was was looking great. But internally, you know, there was something for me missing. Now we we're gonna talk later about the well-being, how to measure well-being, how to evaluate well-being. For me, there was something missing, and it's connected to I was not really working with my strength. Actually, I didn't know where was my strength. I studied telecom because I was looking something to give me business opportunities, opportunities to grow, opportunities to work, and and yeah, I did it. But at the end, I said that the long term there was something more needed for me. So then I started I started my journey. And I discovered this personal development, professional development. I get into coaching, I get into NLP, Enneagram, well, different uh, awareness, different uh, different ways of questioning and finding answers. And, and I get postgraduate in executive coaching I did it in the UK. And the more I was doing it, the more I, I like it and the more I enjoyed it. And it helped me really align myself with my values, with my strength and with my purpose. Find these answers that I didn't have in my that they didn't have asked an answer before. The good thing that in Cisco um, there was an excellent culture of well-being. So uh, I had an opportunity to work with HR to know more about the, the, the initiatives to, to enhance well-being and engagement in the organization. And they had a strong culture and strength. So so I really get in contact with this. And actually, I was I volunteered when I was graduated. I volunteered to do internal coaching at Cisco. So I was helping uh, managers you know, to really to really improve their well-being, their engagement and their results, their, their productivity. So I did this as a strength based coach. Uh, we used the standout, the brief that I will talk a little bit later to, to understand uh, the strength of everybody in the company. And, uh, and yeah, I was I was internally uh, internal coach, but then at some point, you know, uh, I was every time more trying to get into HR, more connected to strength, motivation than I was in the technical part. So at some point, uh, our path, let's say, separate, and and I started my own journey as entrepreneur. And and really, so this is um, what I do now. I do uh, coaching, strength based coaching. Uh, internationally, globally, and I also do trainer in emotional intelligence, soft skills, leadership and artificial intelligence. At the end, it's all the skills that I think that are most important for this well-being, connected to well-being, connected to engagement, to find motivation, to find meaning, and then also connected with productivity. No, at the end, we want to be productive and, 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 yeah, and helping people and teams uh, to, to really be, have more benefits at the end. So that's a little bit, I also do some consultancy, but this is my motto. No? This is my, let's say, uh, all what I learn or all what I do is to focus to help people, to help teams 
to improve, increase their well-being, engagement, and productivity. Sorry, we have some, some questions at the moment. Any other questions you see here? Uh, key book or for of skill and nowadays are mostly required. I'll, 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 I'll share, I'll share this maybe a little bit later. I'm not sure about the book at the moment, but, but yeah, I will, I, I'll give some, some hints that hopefully will, will, will be valuable for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give actually uh, some models. I'm gonna give you some models uh, for well-being, some model for, for engagement and some models for, for team development. Okay, excellent. Let's, let's continue. So, so, and align with this, no, this is, this was, this is my situation, this is my journey, but I'm sure that you might resonate or you know people that really resonate, that did, that did the professional change, um, old placement, no? people that did change. So I, I thought that it, it was me, I was, I was different. No? I, for me, I thought, well, why the, the, the model of society didn't work for me? No? At the end, I, I thought it was me. No? I, I haven't managed to, to really fit into the model of society. Then. Actually, I realize, I realize you know, what's the, the current situation at the workplace. You know, this, is, this is some statistics from, from Gallup uh, about engagement. So actually, the current situation is that only 23% of the employees really are thriving at work, you know, that really feel engaged. They are really like enjoying, they are really like motivated, they, they are really uh, making the most of it. So, so what happens with, with the other, with the 70 77% of the people not engaged, right? Not engaged, that there can be low engagement and there is really loud engagement, uh, sorry, loud uh, quitting. No, at the end, these people, we will see what happened. And, and, and all adds to the other thing, let's say, no, low engagement causes more stress. We obviously have had a lot of disruption. We obviously had had, um, we are just two years after COVID. So there's a lot of stress in, in, in companies. And look at the statistics, almost one out of two, no? almost half of the people in organizations say that they experience a lot of stress the day before. So that, that's, these numbers are really, I don't know, are really impacting, impacting for me. Uh, and obviously, as a consequence, there is a lot of cost for, for companies, no? a lot of cost uh, related to, to sick leaves, there's a lot of cost related to rotation. So, so that's really a challenge. And I think an important people, an important focus for, 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 for everybody in the organization, no? because at the end, people want to be motivated. People want to have well-being. Uh, people want to, to, at the end, uh, to, to be productive no? and, and, and to get more, more money. So, so as a consequence, no, we, we, we really have this like 51% people intend to live uh, watching or actively seeking for a new for a new job. So I say this is from 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 Gallup. So this is some of the of of of, of, of the statistics. Um, and this is some of the common themes for living a job. No, at the end, it's I think it's all connected what we say, not the engagement or the culture of the organization, pay and benefits also important, well-being and balance. And here I think the important or oh, well, organization, I think the important place or one of the important areas to put focus is in the managers and leaders because working on a manager, developing a manager uh, really affect, they can cascade all the information, they can cascade all the, if they, is mo they are motivated, then obviously will share this motivation with the, their teams. And, and, and it's important no? for, for many people, it's not how you experience the organization, it's how you experience your managers. So, so these areas for me are, are key, engagement, I said, well-being, uh, productivity and, and managers. And, and, and I'd like to know, I mean, is this your story? I mean, is this what you see in your organization? Is, 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 um, what, what are your challenges? No, what, what, what would you need? How, how, how you feel? How, how, is this that I'm sharing? Is this your movie? Um, do you relate with that? Engagement and purpose is what is missing. Okay. Marta, Marta Garneri, thanks. Thanks for, for, for this, you know, engagement and purpose is what is missing. Hmm. <laughs> exactly. That's what we, we see this in the, in the, in the stats. Purpose, yeah, we, we, we're gonna talk about about meaning as well, no? Because sometimes we can also find our own meaning. Sometimes we are not conscious, and at the end, 
for me, there's a lot of things. I mean, I'm a, I'm a coach, no? So obviously, I I work a lot with with leaders internationally in terms of mindset. Is where you put your attention. What I was talking initially about the strength. I mean, do you put your attention in your strength? Because when you put your attention in your strength, you you see strength. No, when, when whatever you put your attention, it grows. Is that uh, so? You, you put your focus in your own strength then you can also see the strength in the others. But however, if you put the, your focus on your weakness, you, you have this inner critical in your set, in your, in your side, no? as everybody, no? our negative bias. We, we tend to project this to others. So it's a, a matter of focus and this is culture, no? culture in the, in the organization. No, do you focus on what you want or do you focus on what you don't want? No? Because at the end, when you focus on what you don't want, that's what it will grow. So long-term compromise, commitment, okay, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's important part, but obviously it's a consequence, no? How can I commit to a, to a place or to a work if I am not well, no? If I don't have well-being or if I am stressed. Uh, practice in the workplace. A lot of talk about well-being, but little implementation and practice in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Okay, little implementation or practice in the workplace, exactly. So let's move into kind of practice. No, what 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 can we do a little a little bit? Uh, so I'm going to share some models basically, so so you can use it for yourself. Then that's the good news. No, the good news. I like to share good news. No, in my, my webinars, we know that the situation how, how the situation is. But let's talk. What can we do? And and uh, with best practice in organizations, you, you see below is the the global. So that's what what we say. No, normally twenty three percent about twenty three percent engagement. Uh, this, this is in 2022, the latest report that was shown. But with global, with best practice organizations, you can really improve this. So that's, that's the good news. No? You can work on that. And now we're going to explain, for example, some, some initiatives, some models that, that you could use. No, obviously, I mean, I'm going to explain the models, then you can implement it um, your own way. No? I'm, I'm, I'm working also in, a, in an application, in an app where you can collect all this data, or the data application, no? where you can collect this data for all the employees to understand where they are. Not sure if you know about this PERMA model. That's a model for well-being. was developed by Martin Seligman, um, one of the fathers of positive psychology. And basically, it says that you can evaluate no? or your well-being is connected to these factors, to these positive emotions, to how much how often do you really experience positive emotions? No? And then, and that's a good thing, no? you can evaluate this in your daily day, you are like, you used to have positive emotions like joy, uh, like fun, uh, humor, but it's not only this, I mean, it's, we, don't work, we don't have to be laughing all the time, but the thing is, or oh, are you the other way, experiencing negative emotions, no? like anger or fear, because you are in a positive emotion, well, emotions are neutral, but okay, but just so we can understand each other, no? Or you have, which kind of emotion are you mostly doing your, your everyday? So well-being is it's related to positive emotions or what we know as, obviously, engagement, no? What we were talking, are you committed to, 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 to your job? Uh, feel motivated to your job? Do you really give your best to your job? Or you are just doing, staying there for the paycheck? Relationship, no? How, how key are the relationship at work, relationship with your manager, relationship with your peers, relationship with your clients? And what we talked before about the, 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 the strength and, and uh, weaknesses, no? This relationship really strengthens me. So the more I stay with this person, I really feel better. Or, or the more I stay with this person, really, I feel more drained. So, so and obviously, we can work um in all of these no to be able to handle that way important emotional intelligence to really handle these uh, these emotions also with communications to be able to really uh, communicate and, and relate better with with people so so we really uh get strength energized by being with people and also super important is meaning no i am i am conscious of the impact of my work I am conscious of the impact, the service, how I help people, how I help my clients on this, because this is obviously connected. No, I feel well uh, when I when I see not only on my task in Excel or not only in my tasks, 
uh, no, in the notebook, but when I really see the impact that it has on, on the people. And obviously your feeling of growth, no? your, your feeling that you are achieving, that you are um, getting your goals. So that's, that's actually a model, no? and it's quite valuable. And it would be good to understand where are you this, so you can actually ev evaluate this in yourself. You can put one to five, no? where are you in this, in, this, um, in this model? You can do this with your teams to understand where they are uh, and, and what they need. Obviously, we add the, the, the health part because I think it's also, it's also important in, in the moment. No? So take a moment just for you to reflect. How are you in your well-being here? Um, just as an average, no? It's just, just for you as an, as an idea. But that's the good thing, no? When we have a model, I think everything, everything uh, we measure, it can be improved. So we, it's good to have data for, for ourselves and, and from, from the team. So, so when I know, when, when I evaluate this, then I can, I can check which one are the lowest here. And then I can define an action plan uh, to really improve uh, and, and see what steps can I take or can I take as a team no, to really improve this. So, so that would be a common strategy, no? evaluate, measure, and then take action, define actions, uh, and then really uh, move forward right? to, to really do, do, do the steps. I'm going to share a story because it was very significant for me, the, the three stone cutters, not sure if you know this, this story, but imagine in the, in the 14th century, you know, there are three stone cutters and was one, one pilgrim uh, going uh, in, along the way and found, and found, found them and, and he asked them this question, you know, what, what, what are you doing? So he has the same question to, to the three different stone cutters and the first one, he says, don't you see? I'm busy, I'm just earning my job. So, so he was cutting stone, no? <laughs> that's, what, that's what he was doing. Uh, okay, then he asked this, the second question uh, to the other, to the other, to the other one, the same question, no? and the, the other person said, no, in a different, in a different style, no? He said, well, I'm happy with what I'm doing, uh, I'm actually uh, building a wall. Cutting the stones, building a wall. He was happy with what he was doing, and then, okay, great. He 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 asked to the to the third one, to the, the third third stone cutters. I think what what are you doing? And the third one, with bright in his eyes, no, he says, look, I'm I'm giving the best to myself, no, to really build a cathedral. So, which cathedral are you building in your day? Which cathedral are you building uh, in your job? I mean, are you like uh, making calls? Are you like uh, doing documents, sending emails? Or are you really uh, helping clients, transforming lives? So, so that's important. When I really understood the, the power of the meaning, the meaning in my job, no? and, and you see it's, it's the same job. Three, three persons were doing the same job. So it, sometimes it's not only the job, no, it's, it's your mindset. And, and how do you see? Do you see? No, because at the end, we have all the resources no, to, to manage really our positive emotions and all the skills. So, so that's also one of the insights that I like to share. No? Everything can be learned. Everything is a skill. No? Even an engagement can be learned. Motivation can be learned. No? Because we, we need to know. I mean, we need to know how really works, how works our mind, what our strength. So that's, that's the invitation. I mean, the invitation is really to, uh, to spend some time, to spend some time as an investment, really, in this awareness, understanding uh, the keys of motivation, to understanding my strength, understanding the, the strength of the team, and then how can we really improve no? and find meaning, uh, improve engagement, and then enhance productivity as a, as a result. Okay, so that's the model, that, we, that uh, one of the models that you use for, for, for well-being. Then for team development, uh, to build a high-performing team, that's actually this model from Patrick Lencioni, uh, talking about the five dysfunctions of a team. So, so the, one of the basic dysfunctions is the absence of trust. Obviously, trust is, is a key part. So then you can really, uh, how to overcome it, actually. You know? this, this, this model has the five dysfunctions. There is also the, the model how to overcome it. But trust is key. Trust is key in teams, in person, confidence. So, Basically, that's the, the invitation no? to really enhance vulnerability uh, 
sharing lessons learned that people has this psychological safety to 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 make obviously nobody wants to to commit mistakes but but we are humans no at the end but this is just to enhance this vulnerability and to understand what happened so it don't happen again no so we need to might we need to improve processes but this this um this mindset no or this value of sharing and and, and and building trust then the second dysfunction is the fear of conflict so obviously that this generates uh, an artificial uh, balance an artificial like that everything is fine but actually uh, good teams are the ones that really overcome uh, conflict the good teams are the ones that really use conflict as a way to uh, enhance their productivity as a way to enhance the relationship so really embrace diversity and share different opinions because that's what really helps to be to be better teams then there's also the theme of lack of commitment so really impulse participation and clarity of vision of the team another uh, dysfunction is the abundance of accountability so really encourage commitment uh, appreciate the value no that, that people feel feel valued i think it's very important that when you feel valued in a in a, in a team and uh, also value value yourself no at the end so it's always a work individual work and then also a, a, te a team work and and the final the five dysfunctions so everyone everyone builds upon the other uh, is in the inattention to results so so really focus on on collective outcomes and and collaboration no? more than rather individual so this is another model that is quite useful for teams and there are also that you can uh, do an assessment and understand where you are and then you can take actions and measures to to improve to improve this in your in your team um okay and then uh Maybe for for my 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 profile, no, you can see I came from engineering, so uh, and also now I'm more in the in the emotional or, or the other side, no, from rational, from emotional. I combine both. I like science, no, and and what makes high performing teams actually, no. So there are different studies. Cisco did a also study that I was working uh, close. Uh, there are different studies here in the literature, and I really think that the keys to to have high performing teams. When we model them, you know, basically the studies are model what make the difference, what was common in these high performing teams is the daily use of strength. You know, we talked this a little bit at the beginning as a one key of, of the best performing, performing teams. Second key is shared values you know, that people have, like we were talking before also in the chat, you know, this purpose, this vision, this we are aligned. No, and we include each other. No? We embrace diversity, so so we actually have this trust to, to really, uh, no, face face conflict. And and then a final one is is have a supportive environment where everybody feels safe and and where we are confident to be who we really are. So that's it from the from the statistics. Also the sum of characteristics of the best teams. And um, so yeah, that's some ideas. No, to take initiatives and how to really move this into the culture of the organization no? or into your own culture at the end. So uh, I really love strength. I, I think I said for me was was pivotal change in my life when I understand that I wasn't really working on my strength all the time. Uh, I shift to here and, and nowadays, I mean, it's quite, uh, I mean, it might be difficult for us to understand our strength as said. But we can sometimes also ask feedback, no? Maybe it's more easy to see the strength in others than ourselves. So we could invite uh, close friends or, or familiar, familiar to, to ask about what strength they see in us. But there are also some assessments, assessments that they use. Uh, I am certified in this, not sure if you know this model, also the, know the model of the colors, the red, the, the yellow, the green and blue. So according to your level of dominance, influence, stability and, and so so it's interesting as, a, as an as an idea because at the end the more aligned the more your role is aligned with who you are i mean it's a predictor path of success i mean it's making things easier there's there's no profile better than the other but it's just understanding your nature and um and I think that's that that's important not to understand uh, where we are good at where we make the difference to align ourselves because in a team 
it's good to have different different profiles and and if you are really have one strength you know but but you don't use it it's it's uh, i don't know it just may, may make it in easy there's another profile that i like to use that that's free uh, i'm going to give it to you at the at the end of the the session uh, that's the standout the standout no it has nine roles and it tells you which of the nine models uh, you your preference no you you add more value in which way there's no one better than the other it's just understanding what you truly nature is no what is your gift and 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 i think it, it, that is key as i said as a, as a predictor of success when you know your path no your your, your path so so einstein always says no uh, i think there's there's this 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 sentence here everybody's a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that's stupid, right? This is, a, I think that's, a, that's the, the mindset um, that where we want to focus, we want to focus in, in your genius. We want to focus in uncover the genius of, of you, the, the genius of your team. Uh, and that's one of the, the works, uh, the ways I work with, with this, this debrief. Uh, and obviously there's, there's results associated with the strength culture, no? There's some report that says, obviously when people work in their strength every day, so there's enhancing productivity, uh, less absentee, rotation, safety incidents, and obviously the cost. You know, there's a lot of savings for, for companies. There's a lot of profit increase increase here. So, so okay, so I give different different models, ideas for well-being, uh, ideas for engagement, ideas for, for productivity. So now I'd like to share a little bit what I'm doing, how I'm doing. I'm doing it in kinds of, of coaching you know, for teams and leaders. To, to improve this well-being, engagement, productivity in a personal level, developing the skills, reskilling professionally, so you can also get a promoted promotion or have access to new new opportunities. I also do training in the soft skills that I think that are uh, one of the, the most valuable and nowadays uh, connected to well-being, like emotional intelligence, connected to leadership, communication, time management, uh, team development, conflict resolution, and now also for productivity. I also do artificial intelligence. So, so we, we work this online or on site, depends on the, on the needs of, of the company. And, uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a matter of, of having focus on, on this, no? making teams efficient, uh, saving costs, building high performance things. And I think that's are the, the, the kind of skills that are most, most Esto required. Es lo que he encontrado sobre saving ah. hope. That's saving hope is una serie de city is doing something and um, it's also also about consulting no to raise employee engagement to do more kind of cultural transformation or, or enhancing working environment and employee loyalty building these high performing teams so so a little bit this this focus is this is the kind of service that we offer as say globally online uh, on site uh, as required we do everything personalized we put a lot of emphasis in customer in customer support customer guarantee i mean if if you it is our priority no, if you're not happy you don't you don't pay i mean if we don't uh, achieve your expectations then um, and, and yeah we work with different uh, leaders uh, globally uh, people that has worked with us people that has uh, i'm offer a training for, for their organizations. And we have a five-star rating in Google My, My Business. So, so this is some, some successful stories no, that we always want to, to bring. Uh, we want to bring impact, we want to bring transformation, uh, we want to bring well-being, we want to, to, to help people at the end. Our little contribution to, be, to, to make a better world, no? to, to, to have a profitable business, but also to have an impact and help you also to be more profitable and also have uh, better better life, better better experience. So 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 this is the invitation for you to take action now. No, I mean I'll, I'll contact me. I'll have my email. Uh, I'll give you a strength assessment that you can do for free. I also offer you a free consultation call where you can we can talk about your strength. We can talk about your goals. Uh, we can talk about your needs for the company. And yeah, I'll offer a discount also on any, any a coupon discount, 33%, anything you, you, you will need for coaching, for, 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 for training. Uh, and that's the invitation for you really to take action that everything we've shared here doesn't stay here, but really integrate into, into yourself. So, so, so yeah, you know, 
just say, send, send me an email and, and I put my email in the chat. Well, I think you have my contact details. Okay, Albert, you have yes. one question. Is Can you share the most required skills for leadership, most demanded? Oh, yes. Okay. So I think everything connected with uh, communication, influence, uh, and emotional and emotional intelligence, because for me, for me, everything are connected. It's not only one one particular skill, because you need to have like that's why leadership. It's 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 uh, let's say it's um, I wouldn't like the word complex, but it's uh, I would say an asset of skills. No, because you need to have presence. Presence. It's important to be here and now. So you need to know how to handle your emotions. You need to communicate. To know how to communicate, you need to know the power of your words. You need to know how to use them wisely. And uh, this is obviously communication. And and then you also need, I mean, time management. And it also helps you because it, if you don't have time, you know, you have a lot of things, then it will affect your stress. So for me, it's a, it's an, a lot of a combination of skills. But I would say that really like having the presence, communication, um, a mindset at the end because you know you need to influence so i i i i'll these are the ones i focus on on my training and on, on my coaching and i think the the people that has shifted this and have applied there have made things big transformation and um yeah has achieved great results thanks thanks for thanks for questions so you have any other questions happy to to answer to have this time this time for you now you can see all your points are extremely useful and valuable here in the mm -hmm. U.S. One instance is multicultural, cultural, culturality. Right. Yeah, that's that's um, that's that's issue, but that's also an opportunity. I mean, because uh, as we said, when teams can work effectively, when teams really understand each other, share values, work align. Uh, it's it's the statistics now again are uh, companies that really use diversity they are more profitable as well so so it's a matter of of i'd say it's conflict conflicts for example when i do conflict resolution no and training people tend to avoid conflict people think that conflict is bad people when i ask them what your what your image what come to your mind when you think about conflict everybody says different theme uh, bad words, uh, tension, stress, war, no? but but when you know that really best teams, uh, they overcome conflict, uh, best relationship, they overcome conflict. So it's an opportunity actually to, to improve, to get better results and have better communication. Then uh, it's it's the way, no? it's the culture, it's the skills, the mindset to really make it as an opportunity. So, so, so I would go for, 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 for this and, and um, yeah, obviously there's, uh, say, no, it takes time. Sometimes most of the problems of the, the managers or when I found in organization is time. Albert, everything you explain is very good, uh, but I am so busy every day you know, that I don't have this time. No? And that's a little bit what I say. You are so busy uh, that you have no gas, but you don't have time to go to the petrol station. So, so at the end, I say, no, this, some time to reflect on a strategy, some time to invest in well-being at the end uh, has an improvement because as you see, no engagement, motivation, well-being are key for people loyalty, are key for people thriving at work. So so, so it's a little bit maybe changing this, this mindset uh, that it's not a cost to invest in the team, really make the time. For, for this and, and, and really see the results to improve your, your results and improve uh, your organization and yourself. Uh, okay, thanks, Marta. It was useful. Apply the principle in a different style of learning and working. Yeah, it's, um, well, everything I say, no, is to take into action. It, I, I understand no? I, we are used to do same things in a different way, but that's what I, so I ask you the invitation to be open minded and to experiment. I mean, um, see what works for you. It doesn't need it also doesn't require a lot of time, but it's just a little bit um, add some strength into your life oh, Add some. Take some time. I mean, this, this online test, this assessment, 
it's 10 minutes, you know, it's free and it takes you 10 minutes to do the test. Uh, but it's not only doing the test, obviously, no, then there is the brief session uh, where you can, how you can integrate this and just experiment. And um, I think it's just a matter of, of practice and error. But the, the message I want to give as well, no, the good news that it's, it's easier than, than we think. It's just a matter of, of doing the right steps and that's why it's important to do to go with somebody you know, that has the experience uh, that can help you to go more quicker you, know? you can do it this for yourself or maybe as you say you no know, it's difficult i don't know but uh, when you go with someone um, that has the, the steps the the really has experienced this journey uh, can can help you to go quicker and achieve uh, faster the, the results that, that you want and it can give you the, the clarity. I'm, I'm, I'm also, I have my own mentors uh, in my career, no? at the end is taking the experience from, from, from people that has going this journey um, with you no? and, learn from, and learn from them. Hmm? Albert, thank you so much. It was uh, really, really uh, uh, appreciated because um, the information was really clear and um, the communication, you know, the how how you express yourself and everything. It is so nice. So thank you so much. Hope to see you My again pleasure. at the webinar. And I'm here in person <laughs> to meet you in person. Yeah. Okay. Love to. So so are you you are more than invited here. Uh, thank you so much, Albert. Thank you for all the attendees for, for joining the, the webinar and and that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Bye.